Lights are a little crazy. Just, uh, Leon Local here. Oh, and something a little bit different. Uh, this is a Triumph uh, 675 Daytona, which I bought for kind of a strange reason. And that reason is I really like the Speed Triple to ride. The engine is amazing. And uh, it's just a well screwed together bike, but it looks horrible. I'm sorry if you have one, but those headlights, I know you can change them. It's just really, really ugly looking bike, but a good bike. Nimble little thing. Nice little getting used to. Because it is, well, it's a 600cc sport bike, and if you're used to that, you're good. If you're not, if you're just coming off of a thousand cc something it will uh, surprise you how quick and tossable this little fucker is um, about the only drawback I have found that I don't like at all with the uh, Daytona is the gearing is retarded right now I'm in sixth gear at 4,000 rpm doing 51 miles an hour Okay, that, that equates to, on the highway, something like 8,500 at 7,580. Uh, that goes through gas really quick. I can't imagine it makes the engine particularly happy. Granted, it revs to 14 grand, but still... That's uh, pretty extreme. Uh, one thing that I need to do is, is gear it down a bit. It hasn't got a lot of power, so the gearing is, you know, somewhat necessary, but a little bit less than it currently is. I mean, if I could cruise at five grand at 80, I'd be a happy guy. I don't know what the hell this guy's doing. Being an idiot, apparently. Oh, you no, know, he's turning on the road I want to turn on. Well, fine, I can deal with that. By passing him extensively, which I will do in just a minute. Yeah, just slam on the fucking brakes in front of me, you fucking bitch. Definitely zingy. Very tossable. And a very interesting engine note, I gotta say. A lot of uh, 600 or even 1,000 Japanese sport bikes, they don't really sound all that interesting. They sound like the same screechy hand inline four sound. This thing, granted it's not an inline four, it's a three. But it sounds really quite interesting. I, mean, I like it. It's kind of rappy and rappy and shit. And very, very nimble. The chassis on this thing is amazing. Partially because it weighs so little, but you can just throw it at corners and it just bounces into them. And it's actually a little bit uh, disconcerting if you just got off a 1,000cc sport bike, which I did. It's just how quick this little fucker is. Uh, for turn-in, I mean, it's not that powerful. I mean, you get it over 10,000, it will definitely get out of its own way, but... It's, uh... Just quick to turn-in, quick to go places. It's very, very nimble. I'd love to show you if I get around this fucking idiot in the truck. Throwing goddamn leaves at me because he's a dick. Because the seating position has got a very uh, chunky uh, rear second seat, kind of like an old 80s uh, interceptor or something. And uh, your ass just kind of thuds right back against that. And it's a very secure feeling. Uh, very nice, very confidence inspiring. Which is a good thing considering how dirty the chassis is. And it is dirty. She wants to move, and she wants to move fast. 
So if you're like uh, looking for a track bike and you do mostly, you know, more technical courses and nothing with like really ridiculous straightaways, uh, this thing will be incredibly hard to beat in a 600 class. I mean, the, even in, in an unlimited class, the, the uh, leader bikes are going to eat you alive on the straightaways, but any kind of corner, you're going to be to carry, able to carry a ridiculous amount of speed and go into it really late. And I'm already in six here. Yeah, see what I mean with the gearing? I'm doing 70, and I feel like I should be 2,000 RPM lower than I am right now. But I'm out of gears. So, very rippy, very kind of reminiscent of an F1 engine sound in both its uh, high RPM snarliness and its uh, uh, very, very fast rep matches. It just blips like a motherfucker. Like that. And it sounds awesome. You know, this is one of the most interesting 600cc class bikes. Certainly, I've ever ridden, and I've ridden just about all of them. It's just a good bike. So, hands off to Triumph. I mean, I nearly smattered a squirrel there, so that was fun. And I just slowed a little bit because I'm getting. I should have waved at that guy. He's going to be unhappy. Well, fuck him. I'm going away from him and not going back that way, so it's all good. Another thing I should point out is how wonderfully comfortable this bike is. Um, the handlebars are just really nice. This is one of the very few sport bikes I don't get numb hands on. So that's quite nice. We're going to turn in. I mean, tight little roads. There's this road I usually go to, which you can see in the uh, Aprilia. RSV1000 factory video um, where I'm on this switchy little bullshit road. I should take this bike on it because uh, on, a, on a really big fast bike it's a bit of a thing to deal with whereas this thing would just eat it up. You'd be able to go much faster on that road with this bike than with the uh, Aprilia which is hilarious because he really has more than twice the horsepower of this thing. That just goes to show you, like even with motards and whatnot, it's not necessarily all about the power. It's how you can use it and where you can use it. And if you're like me, how much fun it is to use it. <laughs> Woo! It's just effortless. And one thing that's interesting, this bike, I bought it used it's got over 12,000 miles on it, which for a sport bike is a not insignificant amount. But, you know, no oil, no smoke, no loss of power. It's fast as shit. And uh, so, you know, definitely Triumph has forever killed the uh, bad rep some of the uh, English bikes get. Because this thing is just easily as reliable as a, a Honda or Yamaha or Suzuki, Yamaha Suzuki. Um, but I think much more interesting, both to look at and to ride. What's interesting is I find myself wanting to sit further forward than I would in technical stuff on this bike. It's got a really nice center of gravity. And this likes to go, 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 go very undramatic to slow it the fuck down too, which is nice. A little bit harsh on some of the bumps, but not bad. I might just turn the damping down a little bit. I've done zero tuning to this bike. It's just how I bought it. Put gas in it, put a plate on it, away we go. I gotta say, I'm not actually sure if the uh, stock exhaust sounds anything like this. This one has the arrow on it. Uh, but if it does, awesome, buy this bike because it rules. If not, buy the arrow exhaust and buy this bike because it makes it so much more interesting. I mean, I'm sure you can sound that. Uh, as hear it, I'm, I'm going to some pretty interesting lengths to get good audio recording on all of my videos, which I might go into at some point. But it uh, just sounds wonderful, this bike. Like, you know, it sounds 
sounds small than it is, but wonderfully fighty and you know, you know, you know, it's, it's definitely not to stereotype too much, but if the Aprilia is deservedly a big growly lion, this thing is like a little Irish terrier, just like, you know, it'll rip your fucking throat out, but he'll have fun doing it. Yeah, a little bit of sand there, a little bit of sand here, I don't want to go fast over that. The only bad thing about riding around a lake, sand. Sand sucks unless you're on a dirt bike. That is kind of fun. Unlike mud, which is no fun no matter what the fuck you're in. Unless you're specifically set up to go through it, in which case you're fucking nuts. Hey, you like my videos? Well, subscribe to the channel then. Hit the like button. And if you want to comment, you know, tell me what kind of an idiot I am. Go over to leonloco.com and let me know. Yeah.